Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I might have to keep this one a little brief because I'm melting. Uh, Dutch summer is here and while it's great to be outdoors in the sun, inside with no air conditioning and lights to film and bad ventilation is a recipe for collapsing by dehydration. However, I know that the need for water is, in the case of you who enjoy these videos, only surpassed by the need to see new swords. So today we look at this. What is this? Well, it's a fairly standard 19th century sword, you may think, you may imagine it's French, and you would be incorrect, although I can see why you would think that. This is a Dutch model 1852 infantry officer's sword. Its direct inspiration, as far as I was able to read, is a Russian sword, actually, and is the Russian model 1826 infantry officer's saber. So that's an interesting rabbit hole to dive into if you want to research more about this model of sword. And to learn more about it, you might actually have to go to its inspiration, because as far as I was able to find, there's not a lot of information about the model 1852. There are a few websites that mention it. There's obviously Blanke Wappens, the reference, the core reference book for Dutch uh, edged weapons. But apart from that, I was not able to find much. So I'll share with you what I know. But first, we'll take a look at the um, sword itself. So we have what is usually a brass um, grip, hilt, and I say usually, we'll talk about it in just a second. Then we have the typical horn grip here and a fairly standard infantry saber style blade. And by that I mean slightly curved and not too broad, so it's not that kind of heavy weight blade you would find on cavalry swords, it's a bit more wieldable and manageable on foot. In terms of variations, we have four official versions of the sword, although I'm fairly sure there would have been customized versions and personalized versions, perhaps some are still out in the wild today, but we'll talk about the four standard models. So there's the actual standard issue, the model 1852, which would have had a brass hilt and this style of blade, so curved and non-decorated. In the same year, there would have been the first official variation, so already in 1852, which would have been a model for the Jaegers. Jaegers, as we mentioned in other videos, is the Dutch equivalent to the Chasseur. So, hunter units, basically. And the uh, Jaeger version of the sword would have had a gilt hilt and a decorated blade with etchings or engravings. So, quite a bit more fancy than the standard version. Also, in the same year, we have the third version of this sword. And this would have been as simple as the first, so without the decorations and everything, but the hilt, instead of being brass, would have been made out of German silver. German silver was a is an alloy that closely resembles silver. It can come in different flavors, I suppose, so it can go from more yellowish to more silver, pure silver, but it's basically a fa silver metal that became quite popular at some point in the mid-19th century and was used extensively on some models of swords. So the German silver version of this sword would have been the one for officers of the Schutereien. Schutereien is the word that refers to the militia or civic guards. So in Dutch tradition or in Dutch history, cities had their own militia to defend them. And not only to defend them, it was also kind of a bit of a status symbol. So historically powerful and rich, wealthy men formed these militias. And um, actually, if you want some visual rep representation of these, not from this time, but from a few centuries earlier, you can refer to, for example, the Night Watch by Rembrandt or similar paintings that show these militias, because oftentimes they would commission famous painters to um, depict them. And another example of just something that maybe you may, may remind you of these Schutterein militias are the Amsterdam Civic Guard swords. So occasionally you see these on the market. They're Walloon hilted swords, which normally have the three X's of Amsterdam as a maker's mark or as a proof mark. So these would have been swords used by 
early Scooter Ryan. But what we're talking about here, so the German silver version is the late edition of Scooter Ryan units. So these are more of a potentially something almost of a national guard, I suppose, although not national. And we're in the late phase of the existence of these units because these would then be disbanded in the early 20th century. So it's their last kind of equipment, I suppose. And the fourth version of the sword comes out instead two years later. So in 1854, we have a naval officer's version of this, which again has the gilt hilt, but um, differently from all the models we've seen before, uh, until now, it has a thicker blade, so more like a cutlass, I suppose. I haven't seen one, but the description is of a thicker, broader blade. Um, last detail we can talk about is the scabbard. The scabbard was made of metal and had two suspension rings. One useful hint in dating some of these swords can be the fact that in models, in versions that were made after 1888, the second suspension ring was removed. So if you have a version of these with a scabbard, knowing that can at least help you date it, let's say, broadly in an early and later phase. So with all that out of the way, let's look at its details. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the hilt. I mentioned that brass would be the standard issue for this model of sword, whereas the German silver would be a version for the Schutterayen. So I don't know if this comes through on video, but this is a very, very light colored brass or brass. So I'm not really sure. I, I don't have much experience with German silver. I've tried checking some pictures online and you, it goes all the way from something similar to this to full-on silver-looking metal. So I have some idea that this may actually be a Schutterayen version of the sword rather than the full brass version. But if you know more about it, let me know because I'm not an expert in differentiating metals. The only thing I can say is that if you look at this, I'm not sure how it turns out on video, but you compare it to, for example, this hilt, of the uh, nickel plated 1882 and you compare it also to a true brass uh, hilt like this glaive it's kind of falls somewhere in the middle I have to say so but it seems to me like it's more similar to the nickel plated than to the brass so I'll tentatively refer to this moving forward as a Schutterei version of the 1852, but I'm happy to be corrected if you have more information. So let's start by looking at the hilt. We have the tur slightly turned up, turned up quillen with some lovely decoration, but that's nothing unseen on swords from this time. We have the guard, which is actually very minimalistic. So if people were complaining about hand protection in later models, for example, the 1882 we just saw, I'm not sure <laughs> how they accepted this, but we have basically a recessed uh, shell kind of guard here. So you see this, there's a ridge all around it. And then we have this one branch that buds out, but then immediately goes back to join the rest of the knuckle bow. The, this one branch is also finely decorated with floral motifs. And we can take a look at the other side too. So it has the same, same decoration even on what would be the underside of the hilt. However, you can see this one is quite dirty. It needs some cleaning. This is a residue. Usually when people use Brasso or this kind of abrasive for brass or silver, this will leave this residue in all of the crevices. And that's a giant pain to clean. So don't do it if you're planning to sell your swords. Well, not to me at least, because I, I try to avoid these. Um, moving forward, we have this central decoration in the knuckle bow. The knuckle bow is kind of similar in a way to the 1845 in that it has this, it's not just one 
branch, let's say, but it's more a, a comp like the different elements come in place in a bundle. And moving towards the end here, towards the pommel area, we have this nice decorated area here. We have the partial back strap, very reminiscent of, well, many French swords too, for that matter. And the interesting thing here is that you may see, I'll show you here, there is no peened pommel. So I have the impression that this is a little bit similar to what we saw recently on the IOD89, and that this, sorry, this small cap, this little ball at the end of the thing can be unscrewed. This is my feeling, and we're going to test it in an upcoming video. Moving forward, we have a horn grip. This one is slightly damaged, but nothing too terrible. Wrapped in simple metal wire. And in this case, you see that there's a gap here at the top. So nothing is missing here. This is how the sword should be, but I think the horn might have um, shrunk. Maybe it dried off or perhaps the hilt moved up a little bit because while nothing is missing, this gap is not normal to have. Okay, moving to the blade. Oh, there are no marks whatsoever, which also, I think, lends more uh, credence to the idea that this may be a civic guard or militia sword, because as a volunteer unit, non, not necessarily part of the whole um, military apparatus, I would imagine it would make more sense for these swords not to be marked, rather than for a military one not to be marked. Although we do know that Dutch swords are often inconsistent in terms of markings, so I wouldn't, like, it could go either way. Looking at the blade now, we have a rather small ricasso. Also, you'll notice that this blade is quite weird in terms of color. It has this kind of silvery sheen to it in a few points, and other than that, it's rather dark. So I'm wondering if this is residue of some kind of plating. So I don't know about that, but let me know if you have um, hypotheses on this. And then after the ricasso, we have on both sides a rather broad fuller that kicks off and goes all the way up the blade up to maybe the last fifth of the blade where it kind of tapers off. And then we have the tip which we see here, it's a hatchet tip. It's not extremely, I mean, I still wouldn't want to get stabbed by it, but it's not um, razor, it's not a crazy tip and it's not razor sharp. So it's, I don't think this was ever used or even sharpened for use. So let's take a look at the full blade again at a distance. Let me focus first. There we go. And again, the blade has no markings either. So I'm very curious if in a future video I'm able to take this apart. I'm very curious to see if there's any secret on the tang at least. So there you go. The model 1852, I would assume Schutterei version of the Dutch infantry officer's saber. So, I hope you enjoyed this sword. It's a very interesting sword and we'll discover if it actually comes apart, as I mentioned earlier, in another video. It's a fairly unusual sword. That's not to say it's rare and it's not to say it's super expensive. It's in the accessible range of swords, I would say, but it doesn't pop up so often. So if this is a kind of sword you're interested in, uh, make sure that when you find one, Pick it up if you can, because you might not find another for a while down the road. Um, with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one and thank you for watching.